Half in the US and half in um, you know half in Kenya and so on and so forth. Right? But but this is okay. These two books are set in in, a, in, a, in African soil, the African books. So there's always that pain of yeah of <laughs> of, of the books getting published abroad and then and, and then they sort of trickle down. Yeah yeah. So but part of it is that the, 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 the sort of publishing industry we have inherited. Yeah. And this is why it's important for independent publishers, right? But we saw normally, it's a piece of the it's a piece of the public, it's being published by Bukhara, but probably not these actual educational publishers. Yeah. But for them, they are more interested in educational publishing, so the books can become sets, yes. right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, so yes, yeah, so in, in, in a way, in a, in a, in a way the books remain, even if, 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 if they do well abroad, yeah. they do remain without a home. Yeah, so yeah, they are so often, yeah. yeah. Um, let's talk a bit more about your health and um, oh, exactly. your writer. <laughs> 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 this is a um, so you, your career of choice, um, you're a writer and also you're a professor of English. Yeah. Um, what has been the inspiration for that choice of mm. career and, and what do you and like why writing? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, so, okay, then, so, okay, I'll give you the easiest answer. I inherited it. <laughs> it's inherited. <laughs> no, no, but I'm talking about it being inherited. <laughs> yeah, but um, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of when I started thinking about writing seriously. Um, okay, so I grew up here. I was born in the US. I grew up here. Oh, Mr. Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, okay, you can tell stories about our time in Boston. <laughs> so it's all play about Boston. Anyway. <laughs> no, but um, so but it, okay, I, I grew up in a dictatorship. I, I don't know how you uh, most of you know how old you are. <laughs> but, um, uh, oh, okay, okay. We 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 spot it here. Besides this one. <laughs> Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, three people. Okay, four. Yeah. We have people born in this country. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, 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 but, 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 but. I'm working against their government. No, but, but, anyway, I, I grew up at the height of the, of the dictatorship, of the Mori dictatorship, right? Uh, Father in exile, detention, uh, we used to get, um, we used to get like threatening phone calls from you know, death point, like, what are called death threats over the phone. And I know, and I make this joke, they always have to speak in a big voice, like, we're gonna come and kill you. Like, it's, it's almost like a joke. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why, why, why can't you just say it? <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 but, but in the time of a dictatorship, um, you know, I can tell you stories about that. Um, you know, like having parties, you know, for Christmas and getting raided by the police because they thought, you know, by that they'd come back and stuff like that, right? Um, but, but then also at a time where, where, where I could see the dissolution, the Kenya that had the promise, I was born in 71. Yeah. So I grew up at the Kenya that had the promise, and I, I, I still have those memories of, of, of a Kenya where, um, you know, you could go to a hospital for free, uh, education and stuff like that. So. So yeah, so, so I think it's almost like I, I, I grew up witnessing uh, this country that was uh, becoming unrecognizable. Um, you know, I remember, like, for example, the coup attempt in 1982. Yeah. You know, walking around, you know, and that's when, you know, you could see the people. Anyway, yeah, with this blanket of fear and, um, and of course, violence. So at some point, you have to voice those things, right? You have, you have to find a voice for them. You have to do something with them. Um, yeah, so and, and mine was writing. Like I, I, I just have to write. Um, yeah, yes. And so writing, was, was that a good answer? And, and writing becomes <laughs> your way of making sense no, it, of everything that's happening and 
Yeah, no, not necessarily making sense. Uh, yeah, definitely, yeah. Definitely. But bearing weakness, I guess. Yeah, bearing weakness. Yeah. But, but, but also questioning, you know, because, okay, there's this thing I like from, um, from Nuru Dimpara maps, where the main character Asuka says, Asuka says, uh, I'm a question to myself. You know, it's such a brilliant line, you know, like, I'm a question to myself. Yeah. So, yeah, so then, so in writing, that's what I guess you could write it out. Like, yeah, I'm a myself. I'm a question to myself. And yeah, and then, and then the writing that comes from that. Yeah. Um, I want to pop all the questions you asked. Um, mm -hmm. Probably the last question. And um, then the final question is, or rather, have you read a passage from the book? Mm -hmm. Yep. And then you can take questions from the people in the So my last question is, uh, what was the inspiration for the film? <laughs> yeah, yeah, really sad, yeah. Okay, so so what, what happened was, uh, I had a nightmare. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I had a nightmare where, um, yeah, okay, so the opening passage of, of Weedy's card is literally me transcribing that nightmare. I had a nightmare of, um, of, 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 of I mean, we're traumatized. I don't know, maybe you guys born in the 2000s, maybe like you better. <laughs> 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 no, we're also traumatized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they have their own. Yeah, no, so I guess you guys have your 2007 election on TV. Um, but if I had this dream where our soldiers came, you know, and they were massacring, massacring, massacring people, yeah. right? And I was, um, I was hiding somewhere and just watching. Yeah, so that, that was the beginning of the, of the novel. Um, yeah, so the, the novel comes from a place of trauma, mm -hmm. um, and I would say that I think of all the things I've written. Okay, so th these two books are kind of opposites for me. Yeah, right? I, I would say we this card gave me PTSD, right? Because mm -hmm. because of, of this stuff. That, okay, maybe going with, or, or going through that trauma again, um, but also creating these characters who are just absolutely evil, you know. Like one of the characters here is a torturer who likes to. He's very he's very brilliant, okay. Yeah. So what he does, he likes to torture people, uh, and then um, try to break them, but then also nurse them back to hell. You know, and then the threat of torturing them again—that's what breaks them, right? You know, so so they can withstand the past torture. But imagine you're being tortured and then finally, you know, you know, you're, you're head soup and you're <laughs> cold soup and you're back to your hell. Um, yeah, yeah, but, but but also really just uh, just uh, just trying to understand Kenya. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, just some questions. For how old were you when you had the dream? Um, like in, in my twenties. Oh. Yeah. And that's yeah. But, but why do you ask? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no, I have nightmares from when I was seven, yeah. <laughs> Those are the like poetry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, so, 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 so this will give me PTSD, I would say. But then with Ambario at death, it was healing, right? Finally, maybe, I think the books are maybe 10 years apart. Yeah, but finally, because it, and very well there with songs about beauty and trying to think about music, of course, it's the really trauma itself. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll say PTSD. So depending on where you are psychologically, <laughs> maybe buy a this card, or <laughs> if you're already healing. You are here to sell books. Oh, 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 yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, both, yeah, get traumatized and. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Ah, the ritual. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was always 2020, but anyhow, you need to make fun of people with glasses. <laughs> 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 yep.
Don't bring the fruit of the millennium. Well. <laughs> Millennials are much older. <laughs> oh, the millennials are older. Okay. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gen Z. Gen Z. Yeah. So. Okay, I shall read it. Um, yeah, so this is, I'm just going to read the past one or two pages, um, which is the beginning of the nightmare that I had that I just got sprayed. All right, hold on. I you haven't read from this book, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me see. <laughs> No, I can't. No, okay, sorry. I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be making these noises. Parents, <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 no, but there is that moment when you have to carry it with your glasses, right? When you can put everything on the page. Anyway. Okay, so the chapter is called Kalum by Escaping to the Exile. The moment Baba Ogam opened his eyes, he realized he was going to, he was going to get shot and he would die. Baba Ogam realized it, even as his body continued to obey his earlier command, to start, even as he read the warning, be still in Kaluba's tragic eyes. In the same sharp flash with which you realize, a moment before your hand lets go, that you are inevitably going to drop a, gla a glass of water and you will break, Baba Ogam realized he shouldn't have opened his eyes, he shouldn't have played with, he should, he shouldn't have played with his arms around, groping to find where he was, he should have kept his eyes closed and his body limp. He should have remained dead, and because he had not, he was going to get shot. Their eyes locked. One pair, few seconds from death, managed as a sad one familiar smiles, and said, I'll not betray, I'll not betray your hiding spot. The other, the hidden pair promised in exchange that they would never let go of what they were witnessing. What had brought Baba Ogam to this point? A conscience and a Bible shot into the point that just about summed up his life. He had been surprised when they came for him. He had been back as he anticipated just a routine questioning. A few inconvenient hours, and he would be on his way. But in, in, in uh, extraordinary times, he was learning nothing remains predictable for long. There had been a poor attempt. He should have taken extra precautions. At the beginning, Baba Ogam had been reluctant to speak, of, to speak to the flesh. His calling was to make good Christians. For a starved, bruised, and battered bodies walking in his church every Sunday, he could tell that the faithful few were losing faith. They had long ago lost faith in the world of butter shoe company and good old tea plantation, where most of them worked. And now, the better world of the faith was losing its luster. Faith feeds on hope. To preach to the flesh was a pragmatic choice. And as he lay there just a few seconds from dying, his first sermon flashed to flashed through his mind. His congregation, walking in duty for two hours of escape before returning to their real world, and he, his heart beating into his chest, reminding himself that today he had to speak to their flesh, and that in the process he would be making powerful enemies. He chose the sermon very carefully. Just like any artist with a canvas, each stroke and an understatement that we found outside of its colors to become amplified, amplified in the minds of the audience. A good artist suggests, he told himself, and so he started. There is Judas, and there is Peter. Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver with a kiss. And Jesus told Peter, I tell you, Peter, before the cock crows this day, you'll deny, you'll deny me three times. And so it happened that after Jesus was captured, Peter thought he had vowed to follow Jesus to his death, instead followed in the footsteps of Judas, the traitor, denying Jesus three times. Not once or twice, but three times. There is Judas and there is Peter. Judas betraying Peter, denying. Let me ask you, whose sins are greater? The one who betrayed or the one who denied? In our times, whose sins are greater? Those that betray us for 30 pieces of silver or the fires that stand by denying the injustice of the law? We, the people, are the body of Christ instead. Judas, need I tell you who Peter is? Go home. 
you have much work to do. But yeah, yeah. So it, it is. So it, it's like he's a preacher, right? Uh, yeah, but Bobby is a preacher who, and he, he plays himself in like giving hate to someone. So, yeah. So okay, and, and like the long prayers we do today, <laughs> you know, I'm already surprised he didn't start with a prayer. <laughs> <laughs> no, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> no, but anyway, yeah, yeah. So, so for him, he, he decided that like, he just wants to tell this uh, almost like parable, hate to someone. So, yeah. yeah. And that is how the book opens. That's how the book opens, yeah. Um, you, um, uh, so I remember reviewing this book as Mrs. Shaw when it first came out. Um, would you mind just chatting with the... The hostel. <laughs> <laughs> the hostel question. The hostel question coming, No, I'm just curious, like, because uh, now it's with the scared and before it was Mrs. Mrs. Shaw. Mm-hmm. I mean, would you mind just giving us the route it took from from you know being a, um, a traumatic experience? Mm-hmm. So, uh, how did you get it published at the University of Ohio or Idaho? Or? Yeah, so um, so I wrote a book, uh, and most people will agree it's my best book actually. Yeah. It's actually my best. But you're, yeah. Yeah. Like I said, it's hostile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. No. I actually think it's my best book. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't find a publisher, right? Until, you know, and, and it, it ran a novel. The one thing I can ask you is actually to be published by a university press, you know. But that, that's where a novel's going to die. <laughs> 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 yeah, so yeah, but anyway, eventually, um, yeah, it, it got published by uh, Ohio University Press. Uh, and it did, it did poorly. It did very poorly. Um, Okay, I'm going to answer your question finally, but in like a roundabout way, which led me to the question that, that I've been asking myself of, of of readership and audience and what we value more, right? Um, so, so okay, let's say, okay, so quite frankly, I don't think the book sold more than 100 copies in the US, right? Yeah, but, but when, when I was coming up for tenure as a professor, blah, blah, when I was coming up for tenure, that, that probably would have counted more, right? Than it keeps selling, I mean, you know, it's all, you know, a lot. Quite a lot. Yeah, quite a lot, yeah. It probably would have counted more uh, that it was published by anybody, or high university press, than that it's been published by any independent publisher here, right? Uh, anyway, yeah, so, yeah, so, so leading to the question of who is your audience and, and how, how do we value, and how do we value the audience and so on and so forth. Anyway, um, how ended up with the kids who are, okay, you reviewed it, you loved the book. Mm. And then you told the kids who are about it. You know, I, I only saw this book. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, I, I saw this book, guys. I saw this book. Yeah. And I'm like, why would Mukoma write a book yeah. called Mrs. Shaw? Yeah. Like, who cares? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who cares yeah. about anything called Mrs. Shaw? Why would an African yeah. guy write a book called Mrs. Yeah, Shaw? Yeah, book, so I was sitting yeah, there, yeah, and yeah. honestly, it was actually when I had zero, I ran out of things to read. I was like, okay, let me see this. So I read it. You can't do that now. No, really. I read it and I was like, and remember I said, this is the best thing that Mukoma has ever written, you know? And and initially, actually, before the publishing, I had just contacted uh, Ohio University Press because I wanted him to come for artistic encounters. And then then they say they were out of copies. You know, and I'm like, what do you mean you're out of copies? They're yeah. like, they don't. And I'm like, are you planning to reprint? They're so like, no. I was like, can I buy the rights? Yeah. And that's how it happened. Oh, yeah. 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 And then I was like, I'm. Um, we're getting rid of Mrs. Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. But yeah. And, and, and this particular this particular title came actually like I, 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 I was in, I was I was swimming actually when this title came because the story itself is you know um, when you when you read. My excellently written blurb. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> should we read it? <laughs> yes, actually, you should read it. It's a beautiful blurb. Let me read it. <laughs> okay, so let me put it this way Returning what was stolen makes everyone see again. The aggressor is no longer blinded by the guilt of theft and fear of revenge, and the aggrieved is no longer blinded by the constant need for revenge. When Kalumba gets the list from a mysterious soldier in Quartier Republic, he and his friend Odam set about warning their comrades to escape from possible arrest or murder by the lackeys of the dictator. On the list is the fiery plagiarist Baba Ogam, who failed to heed the warning, little knowing that this time 
the preacher's caller will not save them. Kalumba, also on the list, successfully escaped to the United States of America, where he will eventually realize that the idea of the land of the free is relative. Years later, the dictator falls and Kalumba returns to Quartier Republic, where he reunites with his comrades. But he soon realizes that the scars of exile are as real as of those who remain. And what is the list? And where does the list come from? In the Second Quartier Republic, a battle of minds ensues and it becomes necessary for Quartiers to answer whether truth and justice trump reconciliation in order to move a nation forward. It's only going to be. It's going to be. No, 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 it isn't. But because of. Because because of the torture that he gets before he goes into exile, and the nightmares that he gets, Kalumba Kalumba is scarred. But um, although it's set in a fictional country, I remember when 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 we when I put it out on the South African market, where it has sold quite very well actually, and and even in Nigeria and in Ghana, and everybody could identify it as this is our country that's been talking about because. Yeah we have that collective trauma as a continent. So it made sense to me to, to have it as we yeah. as scarred because even even if we don't, even if you can't see it, we are really yeah. very scarred yeah. Yeah. as a people. Yeah. 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 I think it's just like a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. What about the author? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> ah, when I don't get at the end. <laughs> <laughs> um, any thoughts about the but is it Ogum? Ag- because I always thought it was Ogum. So now. Well, I heard him saying Ogum now. I always oh, called it Ogum. Yeah, okay, okay, it's Ogum. Jesus. <laughs> 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 but it's Ogum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, those ones who come from the US with the American accent. <laughs> 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 Alright, fine. Um, we'll, we'll continue. We'll continue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll defer to the US. Okay. Even though I'm the right one. Imaginatively, uh, that frees you as well. You know, so, so I, I did feel like writing about Kenya, though I was. Um, in terms of the audience, it, it's, for, for example, I find it much easier to talk about the book here, right? Because you know, I don't have to explain. I can say Moi, you know, and maybe some of some people will know. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, so I can talk about my, I can talk about Kenya politics. Uh, like I don't have to explain. He's the guy who the schools are leaving. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's, 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 it's the airport that you want. It's the airport and then the bus. It's all for it. Yeah, you've got this old guy for the year one. Yeah, but but anyway, yeah, so so there's that there's, there's a direct connect with the audience in ways that um that doesn't happen. But even then though, there's a question of who do we mean? Let's say I'm, I'm, I'm doing a reading in the US. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by the audience? Right? Because then, or even then, you have a different structure. Right? You have white Americans, then what you might need to explain. Right? Um, if, if, if you have a black American audience, it will be different as well because of the shared. Um, I, I don't want to keep calling it trauma because it's also a beautiful history of Africans and African Americans. Right? You know? um, okay, 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 right, okay, I'll tell you a story. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> so there, there was a time I like I love translation and I, I love getting translation theory, right? And um, I translated um, a dream depart or Harlem. You know, you know the you know the poem there yeah, from Lux and Hughes, right? I translated to be a poem and I think it's Swahili, so right? But when you're doing that sort of translation, you don't have to explain. That if I say if I say oh. Our dreams have been departed, right? You'll get it, right? You know, yeah. Um, so, so, yeah. So our, our dreams have been departed. You'll get it, and it, I, I don't have to do a lot of footnotes, a lot of explaining and stuff, because because the history, the history is connected. The history connects, right? Um, yeah. So yeah. So anyway, to answer your question, yeah. Even when when you talk about the Western audience, there's a question of the different strata or different populations and and when what you're saying, right? You know, so and how you think. So I, I believe that this book will resonate very very differently with uh, African Americans mm -hmm. than you would with um, I don't know with uh, white people from Wisconsin mm -hmm. where, where I lived for seven years mm -hmm. talking about trauma. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, and, 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 yeah then, then also one of the main characters is. Um, is a Puerto Rican nationalist, right? Mm -hmm. So again, the history is connect Puerto Rican nationalism uh, with African American nationalism uh, and, and, and our own nationalism and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. I have another question. You said that the a dream inspired the book, and you had mm -hmm. a dream in the twenties. No, it was a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I guess I will let go here. <laughs> my question is, um, because you said that there's a Puerto Rican in the book, and um, I've not read the book, so it's <laughs> the same. Um, that that makes me the expert on the book. <laughs> yeah. So my question is, from um, what I've heard people discussing, mm. were you, was like your life experience between your 20s and when you wrote this book, or like understanding mm. the collective history of Africa, did that help you mm. properly bring in those connections as you were saying? Um, because mm -hmm. so I'm going to say from a personal perspective, mm -hmm. when I learn about Kenyan history, I don't learn about it in relation to I don't know Uganda or other British colonies yeah. yeah. until I go out uh, when I grow old, when I grew older, and now that I'm learning about yeah. it, and that's helping people to understand the struggles of Puerto Ricans, Cubans, people, yeah. other Africans from across the yeah. world. Yeah. So did that help you, like you living in the states mm -hmm. and seeing African liberation movements happen? Did that help mm -hmm. you write the book? Basically? No, it did. It did. Um, okay, so yeah, they, 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 you asked that question, and there are so many other things that you know, mm -hmm. were going in my head. But um, okay, one day I went to Cape Cod in, in Massachusetts. Uh, you know, I had like a really rich white friend, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, who lived in uh, <coughs> who lived in Cape Cod, mm -hmm. uh, and. You know, we'll get, they will go there and just, have, of course, and you know, we call it drink a lot and blah, 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 blah. But one day, you know, I was, yeah, I passed out. You know. uh, is this getting recorded? <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that didn't happen. <laughs> no, but anyway, yeah, and, 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 but if I, woke, I woke up on, on this beach, you know, at the at, 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 at Bush in, in the morning, right? You know, and if you just say, then you're thinking, you know, and I woke up just thinking about the water and, uh, of course, other people are written about this. Huh? <laughs> other people have written about this, right? You know, but um, about the, 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 yeah, the Atlantic and what it means for us, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then also, uh, uh, yeah. So 
and in fact, there's a scene that there's a scene in the book where then you know, yeah, where, where Kaluma is passed out, and you know, he's, he's, he's <laughs> and, and I think, <laughs> no, no, in this case it's fictionalized. An Native American, and an Native American guy finds him, you know, passed out, and they just start talking, you know, you know. Then, then yeah, the, the guy is called Joseph, and then Kaluma is like, I'm called Joseph as well. Then they have a good laugh about it, right, you know. Um, but, but the histories are connected, right? Um, Puerto Rican nation, nationalists, you know, most of them been criminalized in the U.S. for for their asking for independence. Mm -hmm. Uh, and been put in jail for for years. Uh, you know, you mentioned Cuba, right? Okay, uh, let, let me ask you guys a question. Did, did you guys know that Malcolm X came uh, came here? Uh, he, he visited here, right? He visited. Um, yeah, he visited here. Uh, yeah, he, he actually even gave a talk. He you know, gave a speech at the Kenyan Parliament. Okay, do you guys know he met with Pierre Gamalpinto? Right? Mm. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 no, I don't know. I don't know what to you say. I'm not going to be you. I'm not you. I'm not going to be you. But what do you call them? Gen Z. Oh, yeah, Gen Z, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, so, so but, but anyway, um, but anyway so, so we have this. Oh, yeah, yeah and, and, and the, 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 the thing that fascinates me the most. Um, Okay, first is if somebody wants like a, a good research topic, mm -hmm. find the speech that Malcolm X gave at the Kenyan Parliament, because yeah. they did give a speech, right? I'm trying to find it, I haven't found it. Uh, he met with Pio Gamapinto, uh, who were killed within four days of each other. Uh, I'm not saying they are you know, the same assassin, but, 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 but yeah, <laughs> very wealthy, yeah, but, very wealthy you know? but, but within that, anyway, so, so we, have, we have these histories that are so connected. Yeah. Um, but, but, we, but we don't know enough about it, we don't know enough. Um, yeah, but Cuba, yeah. Um, okay, you can talk about Che Guevara, Che Guevara in, uh, in, um, okay. in the Congo. Yeah, yeah, the, the Cubans, you know, fighting, um, fighting in, uh, in Angola, yeah. and also, you know, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, def definitely inspired by that, that by that, um, by the vastness by the vastness of the networks of blackness, right? Mm -hmm. I hope I remember that, but that was good. Yeah, Yeah, so 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 the, the book I'm writing a book now. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, so I'm working on a book. Uh, this is where it's on my mind. I'm, I'm, the book I'm working on now. Uh, it's on the, rela the relationship between Africans and African Americans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, it, it, and it's such a beautiful, just this magnificent, beautiful history, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah, so if you can follow Malcolm X. So he comes to Kenya, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't talk about that. He goes to Zanzibar. Uh, he goes to um, he goes to Ghana. When he's Ghana, he, yeah, he meets my aunt who is there. Uh, there's this uh, there's group of African Americans, branch of African Americans who are there. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, of course, in Kuruma is Ghana at that point, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, okay, all right, okay. Sorry, it's, you, you asked the wrong question, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, um, okay, do you guys know, what is, what is it? John, John Piano? John Piano, he's the, he's the minister of... Uh, Mr. 10%. Huh? Mr. 10%. Was it, yeah, anyway, so, so, you, so, you, so in, in the early, in, 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 so, you know, you know you guys know about the Kennedy early. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, so you, so you had this influx of Kenyans that were uh, yeah. abroad. Yeah. 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 So one of them was John Piano, who become, comes back and um, he marries. Uh, when he comes back, he marries uh, an African American woman uh, who then gets Kenyan citizenship. There's this beautiful photograph of them. You know, she's holding up her citizenship. You know, her, her passport. Uh, but she's too radical. Uh, and they haven't given me citizenship yet. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 I, 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 I can assure you, you won't get it <laughs> because of this story. <laughs> anyway, so, so, <laughs> anyway, so, so, yeah, so, so yeah, but she, she's too much of a, a radical feminist, and um, she ends up getting um, um, what is called exile. She gets freed of her citizenship yeah. by who? By Moy. Going back to Moy. At that point, Moy is the minister of Home Affairs. Who then years later will put my dad in jail with the same sort of order, right? Mm -hmm. But anyway, the, 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 the little connections. So at some point, um, 
Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So the only story there is so at some point then um Keanu was dating Coretta Scott King before she became oh, wife no. of um yeah yeah and he, he pro yeah and yeah, yeah and he, he pro yeah he proposed to her. No exactly yeah he proposed to her she refused oh, to, to, to her friend it actually got <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 and, and then, um, yeah, anyway, yeah, so yeah, they all, they all, all, what I'm trying to say is that this little uh, network, yeah, yeah. Uh, that we, a lot of them interpersonal, 